Hello and welcome to the Two Thought Java Intermediate video series. In this series, we're going to look at intermediate topics in the Java programming language. To do that, we're going to start out with our first video by exploring classes, instances, and references. Now these concepts are pretty fundamental to the Java programming language, but we're going to discuss them so that we can create a solid foundation for anyone viewing this tutorial series. So you'll notice that I have created a new Java project within Spring Source Tool Suite, and within that project I've added a source folder and we have a package which is the com.rhcloud.toothought.references package. So within that package I'm going to place a new class and I'm just going to call this class car. And then I will also add another class named application. And let's return to our car class and within this class I'm going to add a private string variable name and then we will add a constructor. So let's talk a little bit about this. What is a class? Well a class is really a blueprint for how to make an object. So it's the instructions for how you can create an instance of something. You know when we think about our homes there may be many homes that are built like ours and they all came from some blueprint. Well, the class is equivalent to that blueprint, while your actual home would be considered an instance of a class. So your home is an instance of that blueprint. So now let's take a look at how we build an instance of a class. So I will navigate to our application class. And within this class, I'm going to declare a private variable of type car and I will name it car1 and then I will use the new operator to invoke the car constructor and now I need to provide a name for the car and we'll just call it a Jeep. So at this point we have created an instance of a car. So let's talk a little bit more about this declaration. First we see our private modifier and then we specify the car type and then we provide an identifier and then here we see the new operator which will invoke the car constructor so this is the real important part so at this point an instance of car will be placed upon the heap and then the reference to that instance is returned and placed within our car1 variable reference pretty much just points to an object on the heap. So for instance if we were to create another car we'll call it car2 and we assigned car2 the reference of car1 we still only have one object on our heap. We now just have two variables that reference this object. So let's head to our car object and we're going to expose the name field and then we'll return to application and at this point we're going to create a main method and then within that main method we are going to change something about car2. So we need to create an instance of application and then we're going to access car2 and we're going to set its name to let's say Hummer. So I'll save that and now if we print out the name of car1 we should see that the name is Hummer. So this proves that point where we have two variables, but they both point to one reference. We didn't modify anything on car1, 
but since car 1 referred to the same instance as car 2, it was affected when we changed the name field through the car2 reference. If we perform a heap dump, we can really see this in action. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell our application to sleep for a pretty long time. And I'll add our throws clause. And now I'm going to access a tool within the JDK that allows us to inspect our heap. So it's within the bin folder and it is named JVisualVM. So this is a tool that can allow us to perform heap dumps. So I'm going to head back to our application and I'll run it. And now I'm going to go to Visual VM, and you'll see that it picked up the process. So I'm going to close that start page and then take a look at that process. And within here, I can head in to the monitor tab and perform a heap dump. And then within the heap, I can look at our different classes. So here we see that we have an instance of the application class. Let's take a look at that and we see that it declares two variables which are named car one is actually car one and the other is car two so those are those two variables that we declared on the class now if we take a look at the actual car references we see there's only one instance and we see that both car1 and car2 on the application class point to this one instance of car. So that's another way that we can kind of look and see kind of how memory's working. So let's head back to our application class. And now I just want to show you that we can change the reference that a variable is assigned to. So I'm going to copy this row and we'll print out car2's name. And now we're going to assign our variable car2 to a new reference of a car. And we'll call this one a Volvo. Oops, and I need to access that through the app variable. So now car2 has been assigned a new reference that it points to. And if at this time we print out the names of the two cars, we will see that they are now separated. So let's actually, after assigning this new instance to car2, I'm going to set the name uh, to something else, a BMW. And here we'll see that none of these operations will affect car1, which is a field on the app variable, because we have replaced the reference, which used to point to car1, with a new reference by invoking the constructor, placing a new object on the heap, and then assigning that reference to app.car2. So we should see that Hummer will get printed, and then that BMW will get printed. So there we see with our first run that Hummer and Hummer got printed, which corresponds with these two statements. And then we see Hummer get printed here because car1 was not impacted by any of this logic we performed. And then here, car2 is printing BMW because we performed those modifications on a different reference. So this completes our lesson, and there's a few things you should take away from it. First, a class is just some blueprints for how to create an instance of an object. And an instance is just kind of the actual 
built-out class that we use. And there can be many instances per class. So you can use the new operator and the constructor to construct an instance. And you can do that as many times as you want, basically for as much memory as you have. Well, when we assign an instance to a variable, such as here where we are placing the new car within the car1 variable, we're actually assigning a reference. And a reference is basically an address for where we can find that object instance on the heap. It's kind of like a pointer to where that object's located in memory. So with these basic pieces of knowledge about Java and objects and classes, we can continue on and discuss some more intermediate topics, and I hope you'll join me for my next lesson.